Hi everyone, Genevieve here. The Prayer Warriors group salutes you sending love to all our subscribers and visitors. If you are here for the first time, you are welcome to subscribe. We hope you find yourself well. Please share these videos with your family and friends in this time of necessity. I can assure you this teaching and prayers will help you a lot. If you need prayer you can leave a comment or email us. The email is on the about page below for business inquiries. Dear family, I come here because the Lord needs our prayers. The children of God need to be more united than ever and pray more than ever before. Through prayer, God gives us the strength we need to be able to face difficult times. Prayer not only brings us closer to God, but also makes us grow in the knowledge of His person, keeps us away from sin, sanctifies us, gives us authority against any adversity. Prayer reveals hidden things to us, helps us walk in the Spirit, and crucifying the flesh helps us feel victorious. Through prayer, God allows us mature spiritually and gives us the security that everything we ask in prayer, according to His will, will do it because our faith increases when we pray. When the battle is long, we may feel weary and tempted to give up, but these are the moments when we must remember that we don't fight in our own strength. The weapons we fight with are not carnal weapons, and we don't dare fight in our own strength. Our weapons are spiritual. They are mighty through God in His strength, not ours. And as we learn to tap into the power of the Holy Spirit, enabling us to do what we otherwise couldn't do, we will begin to see victory in our lives. There are seven weapons of spiritual warfare. The Holy Spirit had the Apostle Paul write these words, 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Paul wrote in 1 Timothy 6 verse 12 to fight the good fight of faith. God desires his children to fight and live an overcoming life in the Spirit. To do this, I believe that every child of God must know and be able to use the seven weapons of spiritual warfare. One. The Word of God is the first weapon of spiritual warfare. Hebrews 4 verse 12 declares, For God's Word is quick, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Ephesians 6 verse 17 reads, And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Oh yes! Don't forget Romans 10 17, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. When a believer has truth and walks in fact, he or she will be able to discern and know the correct responses to the many challenges of life. The word defeats the enemy and changes confusion into triumph. The word is our offensive and defensive weapon. It is a two-edged sword. Two. The second weapon of spiritual warfare is the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts 1 verse 8 declares, But ye shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost, Spirit, is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Jesus said in Luke 24 verse 49, But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem, until ye be endued with power from on high. Christ said in Luke 10 verse 19, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the enemy's power. 1 John 4 verse 4 declares, Greater is he that is in you, than he that is in the world. When a believer is baptized in the Holy Spirit, that believer has a resource like no other to defeat the enemy. Satan has no weapon that can withstand the power of the Holy Spirit, he does not understand the language of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit makes available the gifts of the Holy Spirit. 3. Another great weapon of spiritual warfare is the authority to use the name of Jesus. Do you recall reading about Peter in Acts 3 verse 6 when he said to the lame man, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have to give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, 
rise up and walk. What happened? Verse 7 says, Immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up, stood, walked, and entered with them into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. Wow, that's a miracle. Hebrews 13 verse 8 reads, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, and today and forever. John 14 verse 14 says, If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. We should ask in his name. We should pray in his name. We should expect miracles in his name. Luke 10 verse 17 reminds us that even the devils, demons, are subject unto us through thy name. Four, there is incredible power in the prayer of agreement. In Luke 10 verse one, Jesus, our Lord, sent his disciples out two by two. In James 5 verse 14, it reads, is any sick among you? Let him call for the church's elders to anoint and then pray. In Matthew 18, 19, Jesus taught, again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. O oh, brother or sister, there is incredible power when you get others praying in agreement with you. The prayer of agreement can bring down the strongholds of the enemy. It is time for brothers and sisters to form prayer groups of faith to see miracles of healing and deliverance. Five. I believe in the extraordinary ministry of angels. Hebrews 1 verse 14 refers to angels declaring, Are they not all ministering spirits, sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Psalm 91 verse 11 reads, For he shall give his angels charge over thee, keep thee in all thy ways. Angels are mentioned 194 times in the Bible, with 99 times being in the New Testament. Angels helped Jacob when he was in great despair. Elisha would never forget the angelic intervention. An angel strengthened Daniel in the midst of great trial, and they showed up in the fiery furnace to help three Hebrew young men. How about Apostle Peter? He would never forget the angel that showed up while in Herod's prison and is written about in Acts 12. Angels were revealed to St. John many times in the book of Revelation. Thank God for the ministry of angels to the body of Christ. We need our guardian angels. Psalm 34 verse 7 reads, The angel of the Lord encamps around them that fear him, and delivereth them. 6. Dearly beloved, we must not forget the power of praise. Psalms 119 verse 164 says, Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments, ordinances. David wrote in Psalm 34 verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I must remind you of what happened in Acts 16. Paul and Silas had been beaten severely for preaching the gospel. They were locked in prison in Philippi, Greece. Luke wrote in verses 25 and 26, And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed, and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the prison's foundations were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. You can't tell me that there is no power in praise to our God. Seven, the most powerful weapon of all is the power of the blood of the lamb. We know from scripture that everything God does to bring favor and blessing to his children is by and through the incredible power of the blood of Jesus. Salvation comes through the blood. The work of redemption and atonement is essential as the work of sanctification through the Holy Spirit is essential. Sanctification comes by way of the blood through grace by faith in Christ alone. Healing and deliverance come through the blood. The baptism of the Holy Spirit comes after the blood has been applied to the heart. John the Baptist cried out, speaking of Christ, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the world's sin. 1 Peter 1 verse 19 proclaims that we are redeemed with the precious blood of Christ, and Paul said in Ephesians 2 verse 13 that we are made nigh by the blood of Christ. 
John wrote in Revelation 1 verse 5 that Jesus washed us and made us clean by the blood. In Revelation 12 verse 11, the church overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb. We understood that the greatest weapon of spiritual warfare was focusing our faith on the cross and in the shed blood of Calvary, for our salvation, the way of our sanctification, our healing, our deliverance, our peace, and our joy. With a complete understanding of God's word, total faith in the shed blood of Calvary, and reliance on the Holy Spirit, we can enjoy a life of victory, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we ask you to please send hundreds, hundreds and thousands and thousands, and ten thousand to a million of your angels and archangels to surround us and encamp around us, our houses, family and set up angelic shields, protective devices, impenetrable force fields, and angels to protect us against every attack of the enemy. In Jesus' name, we pray, Amen. Please put upon us a spiritual camouflage the armor of God as we read in Ephesians 6 verse 10 and make us one of your secret warriors in the fight against all darkness. We also pray that you will make us invisible to the enemy. Please paralyze any evil spies and don't allow them to disclose any information about us. Stop all spies from seeing, hearing, or speaking. Let them be utterly confused and have your mighty angels assist in trapping and dragging them into a deep portal where they cannot be released until the day Father God trash them all into the lake of fire. Please put upon us the armor of light, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and we hold in our right hand the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. We buckled around our waist the belt of truth for all the armor of God not falling down. breaking curses on yourself and others. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we break, crush, sever, dissolve, and destroy every curse, spell, psychic prayer, any attack put upon us by any entity, which warlock, occult source, psychic source, machine, leviathan, reptilian, draconian, gray aliens, falling angels, insects, mind control, subliminal messages, an astral projection for implanting of curses over our city, town, house, family, we are free of wrong biblical interpretations, portable door or any other entity as the Council of Thirteen, the Beast, Lucifer, the Moloch and Antichrist spirit. In the name of Jesus, we break every lie, false decree, incantation. All mental oppression abandon me immediately. According to Deuteronomy 28 verse 6, I am blessed coming in and going out. Every curse falls under the power of the blood of Jesus. According to Philippians 2 verse 5, I have the mind of Christ. I am complete in peace and protection. We confess that we walk in the supernatural wisdom of God, the Holy Spirit. According to Proverbs 2 verse 6, the Lord has provided me with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I have a sound mind. Think of God's thoughts. Dream of God's dreams. I am free from the spirit of fear in Jesus' name. Hear clearly, see, think clearly, and walk clearly. Father, we thank you for your love, peace, and freedom over my life now. We worship you and praise you that I am free in my mind. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray, Amen. Some Bible verses to memorize will help in the spiritual warfare prayer. I break the chariots of the enemies of the valley in the name of Jesus. Judge 1 verse 19. I rebuke and cast out the ravens of the valley in the name of Jesus. 
Proverbs 30 verse 17. Lord, you are the God of the valleys. Cast out every valley spirit in the name of Jesus, 1 Kings 20 verse 28. Let me be exalted, and the spirits of the valley be smitten by your power, 2 Samuel 8 verse 13. I bind and rebuke every Goliath that would challenge me in the valley, 1 Samuel 17 verse 1 to 4. Let all the giants of the valley be destroyed, Joshua 15 verse 8. Fight against the spirits of the valley, and let my enemies be avenged in the valley, Joshua 10 verse 12 to 14. Let every Achan in my life be destroyed in the valley, Joshua 7 verses 24 to 26. I lose myself from every Delilah spirit operating in the valley, Judge 16 verse 4. Let all my valley places be blessed in the name of Jesus, 2 Chronicles 20 verse 26. Open a door of hope in all my valleys, Hosea 2 verse 15. I destroy every Edomite spirit in the valley in the name of Jesus, 2 Kings 14 verse 7. Let the water flow into every valley place of my life, Joel 3 verse 18. Let every valley place in my life be exalted, Luke 3 verse 5. I smite Amalek and destroy him in the valley, 1 Samuel 15 verse 3 to 5. I smite all the Midianites in the valley, Judge 6 verse 33 to 34.